If you aren't familiar, Dr. Dre is a dermatologist who has a passion for skincare. In a relatively recent video, she went over several myths surrounding collagen, and two of them stuck out to me. Specifically, gelatin better than supplementing with collagen, and should we just chuck the collagen supplements if we consume enough protein? Both of these are brought up often, but what does Dr. Dre, an expert in skincare, say, and what does the science say? Well, let's find out. The first myth is about gelatin versus collagen. The claim is often that gelatin is just as good, if not better, than collagen peptides. Let's hear what uh, Dr. Dre thinks, and then I'll jump in with some studies. Number one myth is just eat gelatin. It's the same thing. It is not. Gelatin is collagen that has been denatured and partially hydrolyzed, meaning it's not been broken into those tiny little digestible peptides. That's not to say that gelatin is bad um, or that it's useless, but if you are specifically seeking to achieve the outcomes demonstrated in the studies, and again, they have their limitations, but if that's what you're looking for, well, you're gonna actually be missing out if you just go with gelatin. Because gelatin is not those small little peptide fragments, um, it's a much, they're much larger fragments, you're not going to be, it's not the same thing, so you're not going to be pursuing the same outcome. Gelatin, in contrast to hydrolyzed collagen peptides, has some properties to it that make it desirable, namely as a food additive, in that it has the property of, well, gelling. So yeah, that's, that's an advantage of gelatin over hydrolyzed peptides. Dr. Dre points out that collagen peptides are structurally different from gelatin. That's true. If we lean on this scientific review, I know it says uh, joint health there, but it also applies to collagen for the face, like anti-wrinkling effects in this context. The researchers point out that gelatin is merely a denatured protein. So instead of being folded together proteins, they've been opened up and turned into a linear poly or mini peptide chain or a, a linear amino acid chain. On the other hand, collagen peptides are smaller pieces of collagen structure that have been cut up. So instead of a long polypeptide chain, the peptides are cut into double and triple amino acids, still molecularly linked together. Either way, gelatin must be effectively cut up into peptides to be absorbed. And while that does happen in the intestinal tract via enzymes called uh, proteases, the bioavailability or the amount absorbed is likely a little bit less than that of already formed collagen peptides. Either one will probably work, but for a slight improvement, the peptides have a slight advantage, at least based on the mechanisms, but I doubt that it really matters too much. I think the bigger question is related to protein versus collagen, and there's a lot of disagreement. Number three myth, just eat protein. Just eat more animal-based protein. Surely you'll be getting enough of the amino acids that you find in these hydrolyzed collagen supplements. Just eat some tough cuts of meat, like brisket or pot roast. Um, again, it all boils down to the fact, no pun intended, <laughs> so we're talking about cooking, that this is not going to actually provide you with reliable levels of the hydrolyzed collagen peptides, those small, available, digestible, absorbable peptides that lead to the presumed benefits that you are seeking in terms of the skin. You know, eating more meat is not the same thing as pursuing hydrolyzed collagen peptides. Another myth that I hear is like, well, this is all BS because surely you're just gonna consume these peptides and they're just gonna get broken down in your digestive tract, digested just like any other protein and absorbed in the body. They're not gonna have any, it's not any different than just making sure that you have enough protein in your diet. And that's not true either. When you eat you know, peptides, proteins, that they're broken down into amino acids which are absorbed into the circulation. Yes, that is true. But also, your body can absorb peptides intact as they are across the small intestine into the circulation. Okay, so the idea is that consuming complete protein sources will yield the same amino acids, the building blocks of proteins as collagen peptides will. This is especially the case considering that all proteins are cleaved into their single amino acid form. 
I've heard this one a lot. And when I first started my education, I thought the same actually. However, there is excellent evidence that is not the case. In fact, as Dr. Dre points out, the intestine not only absorbs single amino acids, but it has the ability to absorb dye and tripeptides, like those of collagen peptides. We see that evidenced here. In this study, people consumed some protein and the researchers then measured their blood levels of dye and tripeptides. And as can be seen, at either dose, it doesn't really matter the specifics, peptides were found in the blood. That indicates strongly that we don't just absorb amino acids by themselves. Well then, if that's true, then surely protein sources could also be absorbed as dye and tripeptides, and they do. However, collagen peptides are unique in that they're made up of three amino acids stuck together. So proline, glycine, and hydroxyproline. There are some other peptides, but the backbone is always glycine and proline. So since complete proteins are a mixture of different proteins, there's no reliable way of knowing if it's the right peptides that are being created and absorbed. In addition, this matters because there's some evidence, again illustrated in this review, along with others, that these collagen peptides are bioactive, meaning that they themselves cause changes to the collagen in our face and, well, across the body, independent of the actual amino acid makeup. However, it's important for me to detail where the evidence is currently. While mechanistically, we know that collagen peptides have unique effects in our cells, there's no proof that they are superior to protein on collagen production by the cells because that comparison has never been made. We only know through some moderately strong evidence that collagen peptides work, but the comparison in all these studies was either against nothing or against a placebo, and none were against other forms of protein. And in muscle research, other forms of protein are superior to collagen peptides, even if we don't know on the skin front yet. So yes, it's a myth that protein is known to be better than collagen peptides when discussing skin and other collagen-centric outcomes. But the opposite is also true. We don't know if collagen peptides are superior, although we do know that they work. So the takeaways here are, one, gelatin is likely a fine substitute if you prefer it. Two, collagen peptides are effective for combating skin wrinkling and improving skin elasticity, even if we don't know if they'll be better than protein specifically, although mechanistic research indicates there might be an avenue for them to have a slight advantage. And number three, Dr. Dre did a great job. I mean, she was spot on, but then again, I mean, that's no surprise coming from an expert in skincare. So I open the studies and get into much more detail on collagen in this video right here. And otherwise, if you're interested in the fact checking of other health influencers via the science, I have a playlist right here. I'll see you over there.